Yo dudes and dudettes, your friendly neighborhood Jack's Blade is back, and today, with another episode of Would That Work Out? The series where I use my knowledge of personal training and exercise science to analyze how effective a fictional character's routine or powers would be if attempted in real life. So if you're new here, be sure to check out the playlist I made for them because I'm sure I've talked about at least one of your favorite characters for in the past. There's all a big playlist right here, so go check it out. And be sure to hit that bell icon and subscribe. Trust me, you'll never get bored here. But today we're going to be talking about the three types of hockey in one piece. But before people get antsy, this is the stupidest thing you ever talked about because it's most definitely not possible with a black magical arm and powerful eyes. <laughs> What we're going to be talking about today are some real world equivalents of hockey you could actually attain for yourself if you train properly. But I will say from the get go, you probably won't get a magical coated arm as hard as me looking at Bo Hancock. But we'll edumacate you something fierce. So what is hockey? Hockey is a mysterious power that allows the user to utilize their own spiritual energy for various purposes. It can be used to sense people's energy and predict their actions, give the user protective coding of that very energy, and for a certain group of chosen ones, overpower the willpower of others with their own will. Sounds like a mouthful, but it's pretty fun. And it comes in three types. Armament hockey, which hardens the body to let a person tank attacks or strike harder and coats the body in this invisible black armor. But to be honest, I'm not sure how invisible it is because I can't imagine Luffy's Gear 4 without the black markings. Next up we have Observation Hockey, which enables the user to react faster, have superior reflexes, think faster, feel the timing to dodge when you will be attacked, understanding situations quickly, and a lot of internal stuff to do with the mind. Also enabling the user to sense other people's presences from far places and predict movements. Think of it like Spider-Man's spider sense. And finally we have Conqueror's Hockey. This hockey is a special one you gotta be born with and lets the user intimidate, control, and knock out people or beasts with their willpower. So pretty much just imagine Michael Jackson singing at the church and everyone being slain in the spirit. Now when you break these down, you start to realize some of these aren't as fantastical as you would first imagine, starting with armament hockey. Now while you may not be able to coat your body in invisible armor, yet, you can most definitely train your body and bones to be tougher to deal out more damage and tank strikes more effectively. Many traditional martial artists do this and is something I would say they have over many mainstream boxing and MMA gyms. For example, boxing and MMA are phenomenal sports to get you in shape, help you defend yourself and make you stronger and more conditioned overall. There is absolutely no debating that. But when it comes to bare knuckle conditioning, it isn't as effective due to the wrapping of your hands to keep your knuckles and wrists safe when striking. Now don't mistake what I'm saying as if that's a bad thing. No, that is great in helping you to stay safe and get more out of your training. But if you don't have your gloves, a lot of times many fighters who end up getting into street fights or self-defense situations where they have to protect themselves bare knuckled will actually end up injuring themselves from the lack of conditioning like their traditional martial artist counterparts who focus on consistently striking hard objects to gradually build up the toughness of the body part they want to work. I mean, some go so far to condition themselves, they be like, oh my God, what the fuck? So if you want to train for a real life version of armament hockey safely, remember slowly building up and conditioning of certain areas of the body is what's going to do that for you. The best way I suggest is by going to a traditional martial arts class or asking your coach on ways to condition yourself for bare knuckle self-defense since they're primarily training you for if you want to compete in the sports ring or octagon. Though here's what you can do to begin toughening yourself. You can start by lightly tapping harder surfaces with your punches and kicks and gradually build up the speed of your attacks and how much force you put behind them time after time. This helps to strengthen the bones, muscles, and deaden the nerves so you'll be able to hit harder and tank attacks like your body was made of wooden bats. Though the problem with this type of training is it can be very painful. And also here are some futuristic repercussions that not many talk about. As some martial artists hit so hard, they put micro fractures in the bones over and over again as they believe once cracked, the bone will heal and grow back stronger. But as you consistently do this, when age sets in as it does for all of us, many of those practitioners end up having horrible arthritis and body parts later on in life. So again, it is of the utmost important to stay safe and build up slowly. Also bonus, if you're an avid weightlifter, you already have stronger bones than the average person as the stress that comes from tugging and pushing on the bone that occurred during strength training as well as weight bearing exercises like, you know, walking, running, sprinting, etc. Those result in stronger and denser bones. And if you actually are getting enough calcium in your diet to keep your bones healthy, you'll do even more to make them tougher. So keep that in mind and train safely so you can be a king in and outside of the ring. I'm telling you, if you're like this, people will second guess trying to kidnap you. Next up, let's talk about observation hockey in real life. First things first, the most important thing you gotta do is enhance your vision. No, I swear to God, I will slap you. 
Now, how do you enhance your natural vision without laser eye surgery? Well, there are actually quite a few ways to go about it, so let's go over them. One, you want to make sure you're eating a healthy, balanced diet rich in antioxidants and vitamin A, leafy vegetables, carrots. Yes, Bugs Bunny was very true when he was talking about that. Like, you know, that whole skit where he's reading off the line. Yeah, carrots are actually very beneficial. And then, of course, omega-3s from fish can aid in maintaining eye health. And a nutritious diet overall can just help enhance your vision and slow down age-related vision loss. Followed by making sure you get enough sleep. When you're overtired, your eyes can be easily strained and feel gritty and dry. Healthy amounts of sleep can actually decrease tired eyes and can improve your vision. Then of course, exercise regularly. Physical fitness can enhance the circulation of your blood and oxygen flow to your eyes. This can help decrease dry eyes. Also make sure you keep your eyes safe from the sun. Of course, like you know that, wear sunglasses when you're out on a super sunny day because that keeps the harmful rays from diminishing your eyesight with prolonged exposure. You know, and then like basic stuff, like wear eye protection when you're doing anything that could potentially lead to eye injury, like, you know, like wall ball or tennis where they're, you know, smack the thing against it. You know what I'm talking about? That game where you smack the ball. I'm forgetting it, what it's called at the moment. Yeah, you'll, th th this this thing right here, it's on the, the screen. And of course, take breaks from your screen. Like if you're constantly watching TV or PC or like, you know, playing video games or on your phone all the time, just know that can cause digital eye strain, which can cause eye fatigue and headaches and neck tension and could decrease your vision. So what I highly recommend for that is investing in some blue light glasses. They just look like normal glasses. You can get them to look like sunglasses too or any other kind of way you want them. But you just go on Amazon, type in blue light glasses. This is great for keeping your eyes safe and then actually help you get better sleep as well because when you're on your computer all night, like it actually affects with your sleep as I've talked about before. And then of course, you know, don't smoke, practice good hygiene and obtain regular eye exams, stuff like that, the basic stuff. You already know this. And if you have glasses or contacts, Contacts. You can still do all these things, but just know you got to keep your spectacles on. Next, observation hockey gives you masterful spider sense like reflexes. And my good friend Adam on the Bioneer actually talked about this highly in depth in a phenomenal video. So def check that out if you want to. But for now, I'll just share my piece on something I think is important. First and foremost, this type of hockey lets you predict where attacks are coming from. And if you are an experienced fighter, you know this all too well. And that's why it's so easy to pick apart novices or people who don't know how to fight when you yourself have fought for so long. After a long time sparring and fighting, you begin to pick up certain patterns from your experiences. So you can anticipate where a blow is coming from. And the more skilled you become at that, the more it looks like someone is easily telegraphing their attack, which then makes it uncomplicated for you to dodge. That's why people who learn how to not telegraph their attacks but are also fast and powerful are the most dangerous opponents. Now, there are many ways to increase your reflexes, but one of my personal favorite ways that they mentioned in my fave series, Donbaru, is dynamic visual acuity, which Ayaka uses to perfection, which is just a fancy way of saying you can better track movement with your eyes. Matter of fact, let's go from one GOAT series to another and use their explanation to explain to you how you can improve it for yourself so you can have a better life. Since this isn't in the anime yet, I guess we'll do a Jack's Blades Dumble Lesson of the Day. You swole yet? <laughs> this is so stupid. All right, let's get to this. Dynamic visual acuity is basically the ability to track movement with your eyes. Dynamic visual acuity isn't related to what's commonly known as good or bad eyesight. Even with poor eyesight, you can have excellent dynamic visual acuity, like avoiding punches. As dynamic visual acuity improves, sports performance can be expected to improve as well. You want to improve your kinetic visual acuity. This is the type that tracks the speed of oncoming objects, like when Luffy had to dodge those bullets from the pacifistas. But you're not going to do that because I don't want you to die. So when training alone, try going to a batting cage and look at an incoming baseball and track it with your eyes. Using the pitching machine at the batting cages, you can easily practice tracking fast objects with your eyes, and pitching machines can get you about 20 balls for just about $2. Prices will vary, because over at my mall, it is approximately 15 bucks to do it, because they're ripoff artists, but I don't know why I'm saying that, but I'm just saying it because I'm venting while I'm talking to you, but yeah, that's just the point. When training with a friend, draw a number on the ball and play catch. Try to read the number on the incoming ball and try not to spin the ball when pitching. You won't need to do this for long, just five minutes a day is enough practice, though you can certainly train longer. Now back to dynamic visual acuity. This is the type that lets you track directional movement in a 3D space. For example, if you're on a train or in a passenger seat of a car, try following signs visible during your ride. But make sure to track with only your eyes, because this is not a body movement exercise. Following movement with your eyes only is the correct method. As with kinetic visual acuity, you don't need to practice a long time, just once a day, though it is important to practice daily. 
so you can grease the groove, and I'll talk about greasing the groove later in another video. Fun fact, there are also quite a few apps on your phone that help you train dynamic visual acuity. Just search them up. Also, did you know there are six very minuscule muscles around the eyeball? The superior oblique, the superior rectus, the medial rectus, the optical nerve, the inferior oblique, the inferior rectus, and the lateral rectus. As a warning, training long periods of time will also cause serious eye strain, so don't do that to yourself. That's no good. Yeah, no, like real talk, don't do this. Like I actually did this once to myself and my eyes started burning really bad because I was like, I think I did it for like two hours or something like that. I was trying to like see how far I could go and it burned, it burned bad. I want to make that perfectly clear. It was painful. So just a warning, don't overdo this, real talk. But if you want, you can practice five minutes a day. Booyah. Okay, cool. Thank you, Don Brew. God, I hope Don Brew gets a second season. I miss my babies. Once your dynamic visual acuity is mega on point, it becomes much easier to appear like you have observation hockey. So make sure you spar, take care of your nutrition, follow the tips, and train safely. Now we get to the undisputed great good old conquerors hockey and how you can attain it in real life. Now you may just think this is gonna make you a goat at staring contest. But there's actually a lot more to it than just that. Throughout history, we've had certain people of status who seem to be able to control the room they're in just with their presence where everyone will listen to them without question and be intimidated by just standing in the same vicinity. Some of that for good and some of that for bad. A few that encapsulate this would be people like Alexander the Great, Napoleon Bonaparte, Genghis Khan, adult Hitler, even certain presidents, athletes, the list goes on. We do have a real life version of Conqueror's Hockey. It's just not as animized, animized is that a word? Anima animate, animate, yeah, that's good, animate. It's just not as animated as the series presents. Certain people at the top of their profession have a specific type of presence you can almost tangibly feel. Like you feel their passion, you feel their drive, you feel their energy, it's infectious when you stand next to them. If they are on your side or close to you, you feel empowered. Or if they are upset with you, you feel completely and utterly useless. I'm sure you've felt this way before if you've ever sat in a room with a person of influence and power who's at the top of their craft. It can feel almost intimidating, like you get choked up, you cannot speak as clearly as you want, and you feel like this pressure to do your best and not embarrass yourself in front of them is overwhelming you. Sort of the same feeling as putting your crush on a pedestal, which is never good by the way. But if you have self-confidence in yourself or you just don't care what the person thinks of you, that can now put you on equal footing from your personal indifference. Sound familiar? The next part is the never break eye contact rule that some people who have difficulty with social situations can't seem to manage. Never breaking eye contact can be used as a stage of intimidation, but also a level of confidence. Now you don't have to be all up in their grill staring at someone like, Focusing. but literally not breaking eye contact shows, I don't care who you are, I'm comfortable, I'm talking to you and here I am, I don't mind. As when people tend to look away during conversations, it can show that they may be insecure. Mike Tyson even talked about this as a lesson in intimidation. I keep my eyes on him, I keep my eyes on him, I keep my eyes on him. Then once I see a chink in his arm, boom, and one of his eyes may move, and then I know I have him. Which is so true, there are quite a few people who want to play this game of who's the alpha in a room and try to punk and intimidate people with their looks and their physicality. But to people who know what they're doing, it just kind of comes off as being a tryhard and insecure. And Mike Tyson and David Goggins, Two of the most badass mofos around even mentioned this exact thing about a lot of quote unquote alpha males who act that way. I know the most alpha males are very fragile, very fragile. They never want to see another person harder than them. Ooh, the most insecure people in the world, the most powerful ones. Because I know for myself personally, as someone who used to get punked and beat up and made fun of for being a weak chubby anime fanboy when I was a kid, when I finally learned how to defend myself, I noticed I acted similar to my bullies from that insecurity at first. But, but that was before I found like meditation and therapy to thankfully cool myself down. Though I will say for myself because of that, if someone tries to punk me, I, I don't give a fuck. I really don't give a fuck. I, if you're bigger than me, taller than me, stronger than me, more skilled than me, faster than me, and by all means could beat my ass in every way, I generally do not give a fuck because I know exactly what your insecure overcompensating ass is trying to do. And I spent so many years as a victim, I'm not gonna let that happen again. Like shit, I'm the same height as Goku. So I pulled that whole Goku Broly stare down scene from movie eight with so many people way bigger than me who tried to punk me for absolutely no valid reason, but just because they feel more powerful and think it'd be funny to fuck with me. Yeah, 
No, I don't play that shit. Like, I will stare right back at you and make jokes while doing it. Especially if it's out of nowhere and you're messing with me and my friends. Like, fuck that. I've been a victim for most of my younger life and I ain't one of those people anymore. And for people watching this, don't let people do that to you. Unless you feel like they have a weapon or your life is in danger, don't let people try to make you feel like a bitch in front of them. Cultivate building yourself up and your self-confidence. You got this and I have faith in you. But anyways, dudes and dudettes, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I hope you learned something. I've been in a mega One Piece mood thanks to this animation from Wano, and so I had to make this video. I mean, that freaking scene where Goldie, Roger, and Whitebeard were fighting, and it was just, oh god, it was so freaking hype. And remember this, the Mega TMNT video is coming out April 9th, 2021, so be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon again. I worked many months on it, and yes, it's coming in April for various reasons. You already know, it's so obvious. And for those who made it this far in the video, type in Wano Goat in the comments comment section below. It lets me know who stayed this far and watched the video all the way through. And for fun, out of the three hockeys, just like they are shown in the show, which one would you actually want for your day-to-day -day life? Armament, Observation, or Conquerors? You only get one and tell me why you would choose it. And let's continue this conversation in the comment section down below. Also, check out any of my training programs in the description box. They come with meal plans and stuff to help you get advanced goals for the summertime because it's coming up and hopefully we're getting all these vaccines out so we can all, you know, go out and be sexy out in the summer and sun and all that. Uh, but anyways, like I always say, keep calm, booyah on, and don't forget, moment time. Now go become the king or queen of your destiny. Hey, Stinger, hope you enjoyed that video. Hope you got all the One Piece stuff out of there. But I uh, just want to let you know that my mega team and T video, finally done. Coming out tomorrow, April 9th. I'm going to premiere it around 7 p.m. Eastern time. If you want to join, come join. It will be really awesome. Uh, this is one of the longest I've spent on a video. I've been talking about it since like August of 2020. And uh, I put a lot of work into it. And I've just talked about the 1987, 2003, 2012 and uh, Rise of the TMNT. So uh, if you're interested in all of any of that stuff, be sure to check it out. Uh, I'm going to have a fun time. It's going to be a premiere. Uh, yeah, come b say bye. Give the video a like because um, I don't typically do these type of videos. Typically, I'm just the fitness anime guy or something like that, even though I love a variety of stuff. And uh, this is one of the rare times I'm just going out there. So if you could, I would really appreciate it. And if you don't, you're not interested in TMNT, just give that video a like, please. It would help me out tremendously. And, uh, you know, thank you all so much. I hope you have a great day. And uh, yeah, let's go train on that hockey together. But peace.